Uh, let's go to what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri, where uh, a new documentary on the death of Mike Brown is causing lots and lots of questions to be raised because of uh, a video, a new video that has actually been uncovered. Now, this particular video, uh, the, first of all, the documentary is called Stranger Fruit. And this is a surveillance footage from a market and liquor store in Ferguson that, has, that had not previously been released. It shows Brown inside the store uh, uh, about 11 hours before his fatal encounter with police. The filmmaker, Michael Pollock, says Brown is trading marijuana for cigarillos and leaving the box for safekeeping. He says it raises questions about the police claim that Brown was shot after robbing the store and that Brown was only in the store to retrieve his goods. St. Louis County Prosecuting Attorney Robert McCullough released the store's raw surveillance video yesterday, blasting the edited version from the documentary, calling it pathetic. McCullough says the video was examined soon after the shooting and that investigators decided it was irrelevant to Brown's killing by Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. I was clearly in an attempt to distort this and to, and to turn it into something it isn't, you know, to get back to a, another big lie. Uh, I mean, pretty clearly what went on in there, there was no transaction. Uh, there was certainly an attempt to barter for these, uh, for these goods. Uh, but the store employees had no involvement at all in that. They, they didn't accept, no, they didn't do that. And when it, when he left, they put everything back on the counters where they belonged and went about their business. Sunday night, protesters demonstrated outside of that liquor store calling for a boycott. Three people were arrested, two for assaulting a police officer, and the third for allegedly trying to set a police car on fire. Michael Brown's mother, Leslie McSpatton, told the documentary filmmaker there was obviously some type of exchange. What you're going to see on this video is what they didn't show us happen that clarifies that there was an understanding, and that's what you're going to see in that video. All right, folks, uh, let's go to Wilmer Leon, Dr. Avis Jones, Deweaver Avis. Does this change anything? Well, you know, I think what it does is it shows that the um, Ferguson shows that even more uh, that the Ferguson Police Department and the prosecution should not be trusted. The reality is that when they initially leaked that tape, frankly, it was irrelevant to the death that had occurred, to the murder that had occurred, and they did it for a specific reason. They did it to assassinate the character of Michael Brown. It's part of a, a normal reality that we see when dead black bodies are left in the street as a result of police violence. The first thing they do is they kill the person and the next thing they do is they kill their character. And so that was what that was about. And so it's interesting now to see a broader narrative that's put forth by this film. And I think that it raises some questions that um, deserve to be raised and should be examined even more closely. Warren. I, oh, I agree with Avis wholeheartedly. I think she stated it very, very clearly. And at the end of the day, all we really want to know is what really happened, what actually happened and why. Just tell us the truth. Because what we now see through this is if there was an attempt to cover this up, as with so many other crimes, the cover up makes the whole situation, the whole reality even worse. Just tell us the truth. Well, and it's just, I mean, it's, a, it's amazing when, um, again, you, you hear Bob McCullough now say, well, you know, he releases the whole uh, unedited video. Why didn't he do this beforehand? <laughs> Why? Well, I mean, because the deal is, if you say it that, and, and to me, this is also part of the problem with why Ferguson lit up the way it did. It's because, first of all, as you know, in the aftermath of the shooting, the police in Ferguson, they were stingy with information. They were not being forthcoming. Here you have the prosecutor as well. This is why people also did not trust them because they were not releasing information. Well, and here's the other thing too with that, Roland, is the initial story was the officer was responding to a report of a robbery. Well, if this was actually an ex a, a barter arrangement and there was no robbery, why, you know, was his was the police account of this accurate? If not, why not? And again, why lie about it? Why cover it up? And this also goes to showing that prosecutors 
can pick and choose, they can cherry pick the information that they want a jury to see instead of them seeing the entire story. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what makes this so, you know, ridiculous is that as a prosecutor, he should have been looking out for the interests of the victim here, hello, uh -huh. which was the person that was laying dead on the street. Clearly, there's collusion there uh, between uh, the prosecution and the police department. We know that to be true. And as to the delays that you mentioned, Roland, which happened at the time, of course, it, it was significant delays. And it happened because, you know, it doesn't tell very long, it doesn't take very long to tell the truth. But it takes time to construct a lie. And that's exactly what they did in Ferguson. And that's exactly what they uh, were got away with. And that's exactly what they're trying to protect at this moment. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot to kill by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.